Hey guys and welcome back to Pixel Cherry Ninja's channel. In this video we're going to be testing out the new 8-bit doll uh, M30 controller which is a white one based on the Japanese Saturn I believe. Now uh, we're going to do a quick unboxing but this is not a real unboxing because I've actually used this and I used this for a live stream that I've done uh, while testing out the Sega Saturn core for two and a half hours but when you open a, the box there's not much in there. Uh, it's what you would expect in there. You've got the controller, you've got the dongle, you've got an instruction manual. There was something interesting in the in instruction manual which isn't posted or written on the box anywhere uh, but you've got the dongle and around the back you've got a usb type c cable now the main reason i went for this is because i've got a few a few m30 controllers i've got two bluetooth ones i've got 1.2 uh what one one two point four uh rf1 now the rf1 is black and it is a micro usb it has a micro usb slot this one has usb c and that's the main reason i jumped on it it's because most of my things are usb type c now it's easy just to have something like that in this video we're going to be testing it on the mister the analog pocket the pc and surprisingly the nintendo switch as well which i did not expect this for the nintendo switch but it says in the manual it works on the nintendo switch the buttons feel good honestly like if i close my eyes and i touch it it feels exactly the same as the other m30s out there it's just different in color and it's usb type c but anyway let's start let's just start with the mister and see how it plays on the mister okay guys so here i am on the mister now one good thing i have to say straight away um if you are a user of the m30 the previous m30 the black one that was released the micro usb one if you remember you couldn't uh, like have the menu button and the coin button two of the buttons were the same on there on this one i can actually have the coin and the menu button so previously when i used the the black one with the micro usb um port uh what well, micro usb slot I couldn't literally like if I if I mapped a button to coin and then I mapped one of the other buttons to menu it would become either menu or coin I couldn't have the two buttons separately so I decided to have coin and use menu with a keyboard that I have lying around handy well this time you can have them separate uh, this might not mean uh, a lot to many of you guys that are just getting it but for those of you that were using it on a mister because this was what was uh, for one of the like Mega Drive minis the way it was kind of configured was two buttons were identical on this so no matter how you map them they they kind of mapped out to be the same thing it was an issue with it but that issue i'm glad to say is now gone because i have got a button for the menu and i have got a, a button for coin so here i am playing street fighter 2 champion edition it feels good i'm not feeling any more latency than i would in any other 8-bit doll controller and to be honest like the latency is so minimal it's difficult for me to tell the difference between a wired connection and a good rf connection and this one works really really good uh if you uh, if you see a saturn a sega saturn screen uh, stream i done a few days ago that was all the way through that was on this controller and i had absolutely zero issues playing it this is a fantastic addition if you've got one it's worth picking up another one for the mister if you haven't then um yeah pick one up this is the best version to get don't get the other one get this one okay here's a little bit of a weird one but I wanted to try this because my previous M30 controller, the micro USB one, I always referred to the old one as a micro USB one. Now, if I turned it on and I pressed uh, a button on it too fast, I had to wait a few seconds, what would happen, it, the, the D-pad the D would lock into either up or down and it would move up or down continuously like that. I'm happy to say that I was trying to recreate it with the USB-C uh, M30 and it wasn't doing it. The, the up and down continuous one you've got happening, that's me trying to kind of, reproduce that and that happened quite a lot so the black screen you're seeing is me just kind of resetting the mister and then just trying to do this that's me holding the d-pad down like now on the previous version it would just continuously go either up or down until i would turn uh the mister off turn it back on again and not press the controller uh immediately so that's a good thing i'm not getting that bug again i know one of my friends mentioned it on twitter but a good thing to know this controller when you get it it doesn't lock in the up or down direction which is well let's face it pretty awesome it does take a second to lock onto the mister so if you do turn it on and your controller's on it won't be instantaneous it'll be about maybe two to three seconds before you can actually register some movement that's, that's a minor thing that's not an issue okay so the next game i wanted to have a look at was gallop armed police and uh, i wanted to have a look at a shooter because on a shmup i can feel latency and honestly guys it played fantastically well i'm not whatever latency is there it is so minimal it will not affect your experience and i know many of you guys uh, out there are fans of uh, the 8-bit do uh, rf or the 2.0 
for um, the 2.4 gigahertz contro uh, controllers as they're known uh, but yeah it plays really really well uh, I was having a blast playing this shmup absolutely no issues with it it was responsive there wasn't any dropped inputs it just worked and it works really really well on the mister i've actually played quite a lot of games on the mister done a two a half, two and a half hour uh, sega saturn live stream with zero issues as far as controls controls go i can't praise this controller enough for the mister it's really really well and it's just nice that we do have an additional button now compared to the micro usb variant that was out before this Okay, so moving on to the analog pocket, not such good news. Now, the only buttons that worked for me was like the back button, the start button, the B and the A button, or maybe all the buttons are working, but I couldn't get the D-pad to work. As I am, I'm in the analog pocket menu here, and all I can do is just go backwards and forward. I can't move it anywhere, so all I can do is I can select the play cartridge option, then I can go back, I can go play cartridge, I can launch the cartridge, I can start it, but I can't, I've got no D-pad movement whatsoever. Hopefully, we will get an update will, that will allow us to do it, but that's literally all I can do. I can B, A, uh, select and start and nothing else works apart from that okay so here i am now what i did now is i tried this wired now this is the controller uh, i've stuck a, a usb c cable into the controller the usb a side into the analog pocket dock and it works fine as a wired controller even though the way the kind of rf dongle works it kind of tricks everything into thinking it is a wired controller but with the dongle uh, like you saw there all i was getting was a b select and start that's all i could get working uh, but i couldn't get the d-pad i couldn't get it recognized there's no there was no way for me to configure it now previous to this any 8-bit do controller i've tried on this whether it's a bluetooth one uh, whether it's the m30 or the ultimate usb-c controller or the ultimate usb-c rf controller all of them have just worked i've just connected the dongle and and they've just they've just worked like straight out of the box so hopefully we'll get some kind of update a firmware update and it will uh make uh, make an improvement or make this stuff work um so yeah really kind of looking forward to that i mean it works well as a wired controller but we want this as an rf controller don't we we want this as a wire a wireless controller we want to stick in the dongle we want to get it to work and i really hope that 8 bit though uh do release a firmware update now when i got this controller i did actually run a firmware update i'm not sure if it actually updated the app or the controller it ran some kind of update i got a feeling it was the actual 8-bit though uh, app that updates your controllers that actually updated rather than the controller itself but hopefully in coming days we'll get one i'll make sure that I'm, i actually tweet and tag 8-bit though just letting them know that it's not actually working on the analog pocket docked at the moment so hopefully we can get that working and if it does become uh, available in the future and it does start working then just look out for a community post on the channel i'll post it on there uh if it is working or if i do some some kind of stream or a video i'll mention it in there but i'll definitely mention it i'm fairly confident that we will get this working uh on the analog pockets through the rf dongle now as far as playing it wired goes it plays it plays fine there's there's no latency when it's wired it's just it plays really really well uh but yeah let's uh, let's move on to the next part okay here we are we're, i'm trying i tried it again with a wired so what i've done was i tried it wireless first and then i tried it wired then i thought maybe if i try it wireless is it going to work now but as you can see the buttons are working because i managed to put a credit in which is the back button i pressed the start button which let me start the game but i can't move all i can do is jump fire my ninja star probably do my magic as well i don't think i did over here and that is literally i cannot move so really hope we get a fix for the analog pocket and comp compatibility does come for this in the future i don't see a reason why it wouldn't because on the micro usb one that one works fine with the analog pocket okay next up guys i wanted uh to get this working on steam i tried it on the pc now uh initially steam did not pick it up when i just loaded up streets of rage 4 and that's always my go-to test game when i test a controller it wouldn't recognize it so i had to go into the steam options into controllers and kind of add the controller or add all the inputs and here i am adding the inputs once you do that steam recognizes it and it works uh, steam does have some good options compared to other launchers and software uh, out there but yeah it worked really well just kind of added everything you can skip stuff like the analog sticks because the controller we're using doesn't have an analog stick and uh, once i put everything in there it worked really well and what we're going to do is have a look at streets of rage 4 uh, being played with this controller now 
So after setting up the controller in Steam, yeah, I went over to Streets of Rage 4 and it just it just worked. It worked straight out. It worked really, really well. And uh, yeah, so guys, if you are going to use this on Steam, just make sure you go in Steam and you add all the inputs. You add the controller. Once you set it up, you're good to play. And it works really well on Steam. Like I had no issues playing Streets of Rage 4. Everything felt good. It felt responsive. Okay, so next up, uh, when I initially tried it on RetroArch, I'm not showing you on film because you're just going to see a still menu. RetroArch did not pick up this controller initially. Up, down, left, right, BA, whatever I press it didn't work until I went to update controller profiles and I updated everything. You're not going to see a prompt at the bottom because I've turned on-screen notifications on because when I film stuff, I don't want to see all that stuff coming out. And I tried Shadow Dancer on there and Shadow Dancer is one of those games where I do like to test it out. And uh, if there's latency in anything, I can feel it now i'm reusing retro arch uh, retro arch with the built-in run ahead feature which kind of eliminates the latency and it feels good but guys this felt good like i'm a big fan of shadow dance if there's if there's anything wrong with this game or if there's anything off i feel it more than i do more than i do with other games and that's why often in videos during testing or anything like that i will use shadow dancer a fair bit during the test but i've done the boss fight i've I, I got the the ninja stars in the boss's eyes everything just worked it worked really well and this is a good controller to use on retro arch on the pc I haven't tried it with MAME yet. I imagine I'll have to configure it or do something, but at least via RetroArch it worked well and Shadow Dancer felt good, rightfully so, like it should. Okay, so when this wasn't working on the Unlock Pocket, I kind of went through the manual to see if there was any information in there, any different modes I could switch on. And uh, yeah, there wasn't really much in there, but it did say it supported the Switch. Now, I was quite surprised about that because the last RF controller I bought, which is the USB-C Ultimate Controller, yeah, it just um, it didn't work on the Switch. Even though it didn't say it worked on the Switch, I tried it. But uh, yeah, this works on the Switch. It works really well on the Switch. So I thought, let me load up Ultra Street Fighter 2, which is a guilty pleasure, guys. I like playing this on the Switch. And uh, I was able to do the moves. I was even to pull off Guile's Super, which isn't the easiest move to do. But I have to say, they've made execution, uh, execution a little bit easier in Ultra um, Street Fighter 2. Now, if you're after an RF controller, uh, a 2.4 gigahertz, uh, low latency wireless controller honestly this is better than any bluetooth controller out there when i play with a pro controller or i play with the bluetooth m30s i can feel the latency guys like i usually play this on uh, in on handheld mode on the switch itself paired with one of those hori left joy cons but again on this like it was a pleasure to play this or as much pleasure as you can get out of uh, ultra street Fighter. i know it's it's not the best game out there but i i kind of like it i like messing about with the cpu on this but this is a really really good switch controller so mr great analog pocket hopefully in the future pc good switch absolutely awesome and the final test guys is shinobi the sega ages version on the nintendo switch i absolutely love this you might have guessed i do like the shinobi games i like shinobi and, the, and shadow dancer i like the ones on the mega drive i know a lot of guys prefer those but i played a lot of shinobi and shadow dancer in the arcade so my love is always for those first and the mega drive one second now if you haven't played the version that's available on the switch it is brilliant it's got the arcade mode and it's got the ages mode and the ages mode gives you like an extra hit so you start off as that white color ninja you start off with instead of the ninja stars like the powered up uh, shot or whatever it is i don't know what it is like a gun some kind of bullets it does make the game a lot easier it's got a rewind feature in there but again this is uh, this is uh, brought over by m2 and those guys they do really really good ports on modern consoles of old games and this is one of the best ones out there if you haven't played this or if you don't if you're watching this video and uh, you don't have a mister you don't have an analog pocket you don't have an fpga device and you want to play shinobi then in my opinion this is like the best version of it outside uh, fpga um and also with the different modes in here arguably if uh, you want an easier ride then this is good because you've got rewind you can you can save it there's a lot of additional features in here that aren't in the arcade i really like this port i played it i really enjoy it and i can't recommend this enough so kind of just going over what we checked over here so on the mister it's fantastic it works straight away gets picked up straight away you just need to configure it once and it pretty much runs on everything exactly how you would think it would run i didn't feel any latency there if 
if you've used one of the 8-bit uh, RF controllers before, uh, the latency is just as low as any of the others. It just feels good. It's a pleasure to play. On the analog pocket, the buttons work, but the D-pad does not work. Hopefully, that's something that will get resolved. And if I've made any mistakes or if I've overlooked anything, then please correct me in the comments and uh, advise me and advise other viewers of the channel and let us know um, if there's a way to get it working on the analog pocket. Now, if you do, uh, definitely it'll be appreciated. I'll make sure I pin that comment. But over here, like playing this, like playing the boss fight over here, if there's a bit of latency, uh, then you will feel it. So here I am. I've just kind of wasted a magic, but I'm like, no, let me rewind that. So the R button rewinds. I'm like, okay. And that's because I haven't quite configured the buttons the way I like them. Now, over here, now in Shinobi, if you've played Shinobi, and if there's latency, you're going to miss those shots in the boss's head. That's where you need to get the shots. But as you can see, I'm pulling them off on this controller. Okay, I missed one there, but that was probably my fault more than anything else. But I can feel like when I'm missing it, it's not like I'm missing it. And I'm thinking that's that's lag or there's anything else that I'm missing it due to just me messing it up so definitely try this out uh, try the Shinobi on the switch if you haven't but yeah this controller is good for the mister uh-huh for the uh, analog pocket hopefully we'll get it working on the analog pocket soon on the PC okay it doesn't get picked up straight away like the previous controllers for some reason I don't know why that is uh, it didn't get picked up in RetroWatch until I updated the controller profiles it didn't get picked up in Steam until I kind of added it manually so but once you've done that it does work so if you want a good RF controller for your PC, for your Switch, whatever it does work. For the Switch, it just it just works straight. I just plug the dongle in and it's it's done. Now you may have to set your pro controller as wired, but I know I've done that before because I've been messing about with a switch using all kinds of different accessories with it and, and stuff. So guys, that's really it for this. Uh, I would recommend this controller. I think it's a fantastic controller. Now, if you've already got like a number of M30 controllers and maybe it's not a massive jump up, there are a few improvements. Like on the Mister, you've got access to the menu and coin, whereas before the two used to get kind of mixed up. The one you'd either get coin twice or menu twice. Mister, users will kind of know what I'm talking about here and the other thing was when it used to when you used to move it too quick on the mister when you turned it uh, on it would just get locked um, in either the up or down direction and you would have to turn your mister off turn it on and kind of wait patiently that stuff's gone and obviously the biggest thing is it's now USB-C you can charge it via USB-C but it's up to you if you want to uh, pick this up for me I've got one I don't do a lot of multiplayer I've got different controllers for multiplayer but the fact that it was USB-C was a big enough reason for me to buy it but it cost me around 25 pounds delivered from aliexpress so for me yes it was definitely a good purchase but it's up to you uh, if you've got some already if you want to buy an additional one if you haven't got one then guys definitely get this because i'm sure it will become uh, fully functional on the analog pocket but it's great on the mister on the pc yes it works you just need to set it up uh and on the switch it works brilliantly so just the switch guys out there if you're not watching uh, this video and you're not an fpga uh, viewer of mine and uh, you, you've only got a switch then get this for the switch this is hands down the best wireless controller i've ever used on the switch and i've used quite a few i've got the 8-bit bluetooth adapter that lets you kind of connect different controllers to it like a playstation 4 or an xbox controller this one feels the best for retro games like this is the most pleasure i've had with shinobi uh, when i'm not playing it in handheld mode so that's it guys i know i've gone on a little bit but i kind of wanted to get all my points across and i wanted to kind of make it as far as i can i'm sure i've left stuff out if there's stuff i've left out mention it in the comments below and we'll have a discussion in the comments but that's it guys if you do like this content then a subscription and a like is super appreciated it really does help the channel out and it doesn't cost you anything but that's it guys i'll see you around in the next video this is pixel cherry ninja out